Hey everyone, GeForce41 here with another casual preview. This week we're going to Muirfield, Scotland, which will host our big weekender, our British Championship. We have to call it that, folks. And uh, it will host this week's big weekender British Championship for the casuals. Hey, uh, looking forward to this. It's a real course by Jay Johnson. Um, he does some fantastic work with um, actual courses. We bring you these time to time on the casuals. It's mainly user content, but we certainly bring you some uh, other uh, venues such as uh, great courses like this. I love this course. It's one of my favorites. Uh, thrilled we're going out there. So um, there's one set of tees on this course. Uh, I'm playing the wind medium at and west. And um, let's get rolling, okay? It's got some very interesting architectural features. I'll walk you through some of that and um, just have some fun with it. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Great tournament setup. We uh, love those tea ready courses at the Casuals. So um, the course was designed by old Tom Morris in, I believe it was 1890 something, uh, redone by Harry Colt in the 20s. There's a couple tweaks here and there. I think there was a renovation somewhere around 2011. Um, but of course, world famous uh, for being part of the Open Rota. And uh, what's interesting architecturally about this course is it goes in uh, the routing that is goes in a counterclockwise direction on the front nine and it goes on a counterclockwise direction on the second nine so you can see here we're up along the perimeter of the course uh and the property and you can kind of see off in the distance there i again i'm a i'm a playstation uh player folks so i can't do the beautiful bird's eye view cam uh you can see the uh the whole kind of running around the perimeter off in the distance there so that's kind of the direction we're heading in um, the first hole is uh, a medium length par 4, 450. You see this interesting uh, C bunker over here. Um, not really in play for uh, us on this game who hit it 300 yards, but certainly uh, imposing for the, uh, the average golfer. So I think what's interesting about this hole is it looks like a bit of a narrow um, landing area, but it really is. You got a little bit more room than you think uh, if you get it up here around the corner. Um, not overly generous, but you have that slope there to kind of uh, kick you back towards uh, the fairway. So here we go. I might take advantage of that little slope right there. Hey! I love that slope. Awesome slope. Okay. So we're in business. So the first green is rather uh, benign. It's kind of flat and um, not seriously uh troubling uh it's pretty simple round green you got the cool bunkers surrounding it what i love about this course is you have some very interesting shaped bunkers um you know as to go along with the pot bunkers and the kind of you know basic circle shapes but um this green is fairly simple let's see if we can uh, work some magic here um defaulting to the eight iron pitch which i love so much hey boy i'm gonna put a little bit of spin on this See what we can do. That's going to shape in there nicely. Very nicely. Oh. There we go. We're in business. Green's running at 158. It's the default green setting. Start out with a bird. I will take that any day. Okay, off to number two. This is a short par four. Pretty setting there. All right, so what you notice about this hole is, yep, we're against the perimeter of the course again, and that is all OB. Um, you will be tempted to go for this green, certainly. Wind is in our face today. Um, certainly in this game, you're gonna have at it. Um, that's not that threatening uh, in this game but if you were playing this in real life uh, you will notice a lot of the pros and um the championships will will be looking at an iron here most likely or a hybrid um if i were playing it for real which uh i would be so fortunate to do someday probably looking at a five wood <laughs> right around there that'll keep me just short of those bunkers but uh for today we're gonna have some fun certainly and go for it might even put a little bit of a fade there. 
offset the wind and just guard against going left. Catch that slope. So the green complexes here are very interesting, you'll notice. Um, you'll have a lots of little runoff areas caused by the bunkers and um, up and down challenges. Um, very, very interesting uh, up and down scenarios to deal with. And I still, as you see, have not perfected the art of talking and swinging at the same time. As I am new to this. Okay, decent start. Short game whiff there, but uh, <laughs> on we go to number three, which is um, medium length par four with a bit of an arrows concept to say the least. Uh, you've got two bunkers shouldering it just uh, under 300 yards out and you've got that short little narrow neck uh, to think about um, in this game. Absolutely, I'm going to try to run it up there. Um, if you were playing this for real, again, you'd be looking at some sort of hybrid iron kind of layup. Um, or maybe you wouldn't, but uh, I sure as heck would. The hill might help me here tremendously. Come on. Oh, stay out of that. Did I catch it? Nope. Heavy, heavy rough lie. Not good. Give it a little extra. Give it some spin. And I whiffed again. So we're having some short game trouble. Again, flat green. This is a birdie op for sure. I've just uh, completely ruined that chance. But I kind of have two birdie holes in a row. Get in. Almost pulled it off. Okay. Onwards. To the first par three. And I believe this is the longest par three on the course. This is about 220, 225, 227. And you've got this narrow green. Um, very interesting bunkers in the front. And of course, with this long narrow green... And the wind, you know, I have this wind on medium. It's only going at five miles an hour. So um, that's not going to make it as interesting <laughs> as it could be. But that's what's going to make this hole interesting. It's your club, your club selection uh, along with the hole location and the wind. So you better have an, a good caddy with you, folks, if you're, uh, if you're new to the course. But um, here, this isn't doing much for us. Five miles an hour. I'm just going to kind of keep it like this. I might actually put a little spin on it. not going to be much trouble at all. Let's see if we get the roll. Come on. There we go. There we go. Come on. You're kidding. Get in. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? <laughs> I have had a whole... This is my first hole-on-one on the new game. And I'm glad I got this on video. So, wow. That's a pleasant surprise. Was not expecting that. Holy cow. And I got a trophy. Excellent. Okay. On to number four. Five. I'm sorry. Where's my head? I'm too excited. All right. First par five. <laughs> Here we go. Um, this is a pretty interesting hole uh, architecturally. This is, I believe, the... I'm moving over here. And again, I so wish I was on the PC for you. Um, the highest point on the course... Uh, you can see it's uh, the edge of the course out by the water. This must be a spectacular view. Um, pretty cool looking here in the game, but um, absolutely a super cool vantage point uh, to be on. It must be absolutely thrilling to to be there for real. Um, again, this is a birdie op if you have the wind. We kind of have a crosswind here. Um, the, you know, playing at 556, you got the wind behind you. This is a big birdie op. Wind in your face, it's going to play, uh, obviously, much harder. Um, we've got some bunkers in play here, but to be honest with you, um, 
they're not overly imposing, uh, but it's tight. It's it's not as big as the landing area as I as I remembered uh, from the first go around. I played this uh, a week or so ago. Come on, got some sort of path there, a walking path. Okay. All right, so you can see. <laughs> that is one well-guarded green with uh, some interesting bunkering. So first, let's look at the bunkering. This is pretty cool. That's 11 over here. So the bunkers from 11 kind of are shared in a sense. I think 5 shares this a little bit more uh, with 11. But um, yeah, that's definitely something uh, you have to consider. Now, it's hidden here, and we'll talk a little bit more about the visuals on this course. Um, but not only do you have one, two, three, four, five bunkers there to contend with, and one, two, three, four on the left, you have this green that is sloped severely down to the left. So, yeah, it's very reachable, but you have to catch that green just right, or you're certainly uh, risking fall-offs into bunkers or off the green. So we've got the wind going across. we got 193-ish to the front. That's going to be a little much. I'm going to pull that back a little. Um, let me just pull it back like that. And we've got the lie going up a little bit. Okay. I caught it okay a little fast. The wind's going to help me catch that hill. And there we go. So you can see the contour is very interesting around the green oh that's a flat putt look at this oh and I pushed it oh man awful horrible putt all right so I think we have a tough par 4 coming up here um, what you have here is a hole that goes hard left and you've got some bunkering on the left and what you'll notice here is you can't see that bunkering right um, that's fairly common uh, in links courses for most of you who are familiar with them but this course is well known um, for actually not having that issue um, it's it's often called the fairest test uh, of, of these type courses because you can see most of the, the challenges in front of you. That is about 80 to 90% of the bunkers are viewable. Um, this hole ain't one of them. <laughs> so, yeah, this is one of the toughest par fours in the course. Certainly, um, if you need to go down this way, it's going to play way long into that green. But thankfully, we all can hit it 300 yards now. <laughs> Look what that does. I mean, it totally takes that out of play. So... Um, I'm not sure if that tee box might be in the wrong spot or it's just that we hit it 300 yards. Um, we can bomb it down there. Let me just double check on the OB. Nope, there's no, no OB down there. So no risk really at bombing away here other than fasting one and winding up behind that wall. So the distance in the game really kind of changes the look and feel of this one. Um, we're in the nice high grass. We have a decent angle in. Um, again, you've got um, a couple of bunkers protecting the green here. One front right, one off to the left. And really, we're not in a bad spot considering. Sorry about this, folks. But let me get a little bit of spin on this. That might work okay. I will certainly take that. That is just fine. Let's see if I can hit a decent putt this time. That one's alright. That's got a chance. Alright. Another par 3 coming up. All right, the seventh. 
I think this one's the shortest par three. Not really sure, but again, you see some really cool bunkering. This is some deep bunkering. You got three on the left, one on the right, and they are deep. Um, the green is fairly flat and a fairly simple round oval shape. Um, given this wind, hmm, seven miles an hour. I'm going to just kind of throw it to the middle and give it a little spin. What you don't want to be here is left. And I got away with that one. Thirty feet. Come on now. Oh. Let's finish this off. You see some tournament like objects off in the distance. Great looking feel on this one. Jay's done an excellent job. Okay. Eight is another par four, about 400 yards. And now you see some, <laughs> you got some serious bunker on the right side. You got one, two, three, four, five bunkers. Um, they're about 250 out for the most part. We're bombing at 300. That takes us out here. Um, which shouldn't be too difficult. That's not the widest landing area. Um, and again, you see where, you know, we're off in the corner of the course. We're finishing that internal loop, that clockwise loop, um, around the perimeter. And, um, this hole is probably extraordinarily tough if you don't hit 300 yards on a video game, but... Let's uh, give it a little bit of a fade. A little too much. And there's the risk. That you go across the fairway. Smallish green. Again, the bunkering here, you've got these um, bunkers in the front. Um, about 20, 30 yards in front. And then you've got bunkers in the back, fairly steep. So you don't want to give it too much here. Kind of land that in the middle, uh, slowed it so it's going to hit the front, but it's still going to wind up okay. Oh, it's doing a little bit of both. Get back in there. Oh. Just missed. Okay, we'll take a par here. Okay, we're finishing the first nine with another par five. Um, I don't think we got to see it here, but um, I can't turn around. I think this is the hole that backs up onto the Renaissance Club. <laughs> I think there's a wall there that's shared with the Renaissance Club. You see if he's, I'm gonna turn around here. Yeah, just behind me. So um, technically right back there uh, would be where the Renaissance Club is. Um, that was the inspiration for one of my courses, Grash War. And um, that is in the real game. I'm sorry, it is in this game, the real version, uh, 2K23. What you see here is um, another par 5 that's really, really going to be wind dependent. 552 is easy to get to as long as that wind is not right in your face. Um, interestingly, though, you know, you've got the bunker left, bunker right, and you've got this bunker right out in the middle that is right in the wheelhouse of my range um so what i'm gonna do here is just pull it back a little i'm gonna hit a little cut and it's not cutting and oh he got lucky proverbial rather be lucky than good um what you see here is some of these bunkers short of the green um again if you're laying up that's going to be a bit of a challenge um certainly we're not doing that here um but 
you've got to read these undulations just right if you want to get it up there and get it close. I've got seven miles an hour going across. So we're just going to throw it over there. Oh, look at that lie. Now we've got to factor in the lie. How? Wow, that was worse than I thought. But I caught the light rough. Okay. A little up and down. That should be pretty good. And the crowd's watching. Nice job with crowds. You know, crowds are not easy to... They're, they're very easy to put on the course. You just click a shape. But um, to make them look good and realistic and have them even... Most people kind of rush through it, um, but he's got them bunched very nicely, so it's uh, a nice scene around the clubhouse. Okay, number 10. We've got one, two, three bunkers on the right side, and then two bunkers right up in front of us. Hey, um, I kind of like this idea. I might have to use this. In my designs um, given everybody's hitting it so far um, you kind of need a bunch of different points of interest um, in your tee shots to, to make them interesting for all levels oops I'm sorry here we're just blasting it over all three of those um, but we've got some wind in the face those bunkers in the distance would come into play if we had some wind certainly not gonna today, so we'll just have at it. And then you'll see right up here some very interesting um, bunkering and areas around the green. These little hills and swales, these are super interesting and cool. Um, these bunkers in this hole are actually fairly shallow. They're actually not a big deal um, relative to some of the other ones. It's a fairly simple green, just a simple circle, and fairly flat. Hopefully I got a good look at it. It's doing a little of both. Very makeable though, and I pulled it. It's alright. Okay, on to 11. And the one and only blind tee shot on the course. So we talked about uh, the visuals on this course, how most of the bunkering, etc. is visible. Not here. This is the... Um, classic blind tee shot so it's a hill right at the start of the fairway this is where you need a caddy you've got some trees up there as a reference point which is cool um, let's take a look again at what's up there so we've got the bunker ring two left one I'm sorry two right one left those trees are an excellent reference point off in the distance behind the green the wind is going to the right, so I'm going to go over there. I'm going to give it a little bit of a draw. That's pretty good. Hole location is on the right side. Um, you might want to favor the left side on this, but I don't think that's going to make a big difference here. interesting green shape here and again this is 11 remember we uh, saw the back of this green over on five um, so you've got all these bunkers all together so this is the 11th hole we were talking about earlier um, you've got some steep bunkers on either side and a kind of triangular shaped green with some tiering here so I've got 68 yards in and some wind and let's give that a little bit of de-lofting see what happens too much and you don't want to run off hang on 
And it's going to run off. So I've trickled off. I've been doing a pretty good job of not doing that so far. And there's the chipping. All right. On the 12. All right. This is a shorter par four down the hill slightly. Slightly downhill, slightly hidden. And given our distance, we got some trouble to deal with if we want to go for it. Um, you bet we're going for it today. Again, you know, it's kind of fun to think about how you would play this for real. Um, for me, that bunker wouldn't be off the tee with the driver. That wouldn't be a problem. But that's a pretty narrow landing area. So this is this would be an interesting one to play for real. Um, today, certainly, um, I'm going to go for it, even though we've got a lot of trouble there. Because I've got that wind helping me off to the... Coming in off the right, going to the left. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go just a little fake, so I don't want that wind taking too much. Yeah, I pulled it. Or I fasted it. That's what happened. Oh, get down on that path. Stop right there. Darn it, it's heavy rough. I'm going to go up a club. I'm going to go up two, actually. Give it some loft. Give it that lie. Not bad. Remakeable putt. Even though it's 26 feet. There you go. It was makeable indeed. Eight under. I'm playing on pro swing settings, folks, just so you know. Probably figured it out if you're looking at the swing meter. All right. Famous par three. This is um, rather famous par three. This is most people's favorite and uh, a well-known par three uphill. Uh, it's kind of got this amphitheater type look to it. And you've got severe bunkering on either side, fall-offs on either side there. And um, certainly... If you want to look at the front here, you've got some trouble up front. It falls off in the front, but if you don't, whoops, if you don't get it up there in this version, it's uh, kind of a big hill. So I think he's captured this nicely. Um, we've got wind and a hill. Let's get it up there. Not playing around with coming up short. A little long here is just going to be fine. You gotta be careful in this one in this game, right? If you do not want to go down there at all past that hole, um, very conservative putt here. I felt like I hit that half the pace that I should have. It's still gonna go past. You can stop now. You can stop now. We'll speed it up. Oh, oh, oh. I thought about it. I was right on it. And I still didn't execute. Can he chip in again? Look at this. What is this? 2K21? <laughs> Two chip ins and a hole in one. All right. Fourteen, another par four. Again, so this one's going uh, off to the left. You've got some interesting bunkering on the left. You've got one out here on the right. Again, not in play when you're hitting a 302. Um, so actually, the trick here is going to be fitting it in that fairly narrow fairway because it's going diagonally. We got the wind to help, so we're throwing it out there towards that camera tower. I think I caught it. Too much to the right, but the wind might save me. Yep, 
It did indeed. Okay, green complex here, not nearly as tough as what we've been seeing. It's fairly simple circular green. One bunker only off on the right there. We got a little one over there on the left. Um, not really a concern for us. However, the yardage is just not a good yardage for me. So let's pull it back to there. See what happens. Perfect, did it? Oh, are you kidding? Oh. Any whiffs on the putt? Ah, oh. pull the putt. Take your time. And he really whiffs on the second putt. Birdie up ruin. That one's on me. For sure. Brutal. Okay. So another one where we're powering it way out there. There's some fairway bunkers way back here that us mere mortals would have to deal with. Um, but we're going way out here. Again, we're off on an angle. We've got the wind. It's actually going across to the left. Um, that's going to be the challenge keeping it in here. But we're going to offset the wind with a little bit of a cut. I cut that too much and I slowed it. It's actually going to be a decent angle in. Into the tall stuff. I've only been in there a couple times today. 132 we'll call it. See what happens here. Not bad, it's gonna be a little long. Fairly flattish green. Let's make up for that last putt. Those last two putts, really. There you go. That makes up for one of them. Okay. On to the final par three. 179. We've got eight miles an hour going across. This green is a little tricky, I believe. This is one that's, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a kind of a bowl upside down saucer shaped green. So you can see here um, some serious fall offs. That, that's a serious um, false front. Um, I, think, I think some folks are a little too critical of some courses um, with false fronts. That's a false front, right? It's, you've got a serious fall off and you've got a few feet of green that's going seriously downhill. When you have just a little red down here at the edge, that, that's not a false front. That's just, you know, the laws of physics and gravity. Your, your green's pitched and it's going to go uphill a little bit. So, um, some people complain about those a little too much. Um, some folks who play and like to do videos and don't really design uh, get a little too tough on us poor designers. But it's all fun, folks. So let's do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. See what happens. As you can see, I like to shape them. That's my archetype. I have the sculptor. Twenty-five feet downhill. It's got a chance. There you go. All right. I think I made up for those two whiffs. <laughs> Back on 14. Nine under. Not bad round. 17, a par five. The final par five, your last scoring up on the course for the most part. 18 is, uh, is a tough one. So 
we're going to take a look here. We've got the bunkering down the left, a big bunker right there in the middle. You've got one, two, three, four, and then a fifth one way up there. Pretty narrow landing area. Uh, wind's cutting across. That's not going to help because it looks like this fairway moves a little bit that way. So we're going to put it out here towards these left bunkers and see what happens. Felt pretty good, but I slowed it. That's going to hold. Ah, it's just going to be in the short stuff. Okay. So you see there's an interesting uh, set of bunkers back here. We're, we're not going to be worrying about them today. But again, if you're playing these for real and you needed to hit a layup, those are about 100 yards out. So that's what you got to contend with, right? If you're playing for real, do you, do you have to lay it up in front of those? Depending on where you wound up your tee shot or can you get them over? Um, and then you've got um, some undulations just past that. We're certainly not in that uh, ballpark today. We are going to go for it and you see this complex is interesting because you're going to get some help you're going to get some help that way and you're going to get some help whoops right over here so absolutely this is your let it fly last chance at uh, an eagle certainly but a definite birdie up if you get it on there that's in this case it's going to kick it away from the whole location on the right but still we'll take it Um, I'm putting well. I'm trying not to chip where I wouldn't really chip in real life. And that was not a good putt. But that's going to turn. Oh, it's not going to turn. Oh. And a good op is wasted. It's all right. Told me I'd be a nine under after 17. I'd say that's pretty damn good for me. So let's roll. All right, the famous finishing hole, one of the most famous finishing holes in golf and of the championship circuit. Um, again, we're way up here with the 302. It narrows significantly. So that's going to be the challenge here. Um, for mere mortals, yeah, you've got uh, two bunkers on the left and, and one on the right to deal with. Um, you've got the stands, the grandstands, and just a great scene. The clubhouse back there, um, everybody waiting for you. Just awesome hole. Um, great, great finishing hole. Green is super interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. Look at this. We're going past the walking cart path there. I'm going to say cart path. There's probably no carts. The walking path. Um, interesting green complex. We've got the bunker way short. You've got two left, one front left, one just off to the left, and you've got uh, the famous ring bunker over here. Very interesting shape. Um, I haven't done one of those in a while in my courses. I gotta pull that back out of the bag of tricks, I think. But um, you got the gallery, the whole the whole scene here. So um, we're gonna go. Oh, we've got the one behind us. My bad. 118, that's actually going to be too much. 104 is not enough. We're going to go a little this and a little that. All right. All right. And we'll be visiting the famous ring bunker. Not bad. Tap in to finish with a par and nine under. Okay, I'll take it. Um, so there it is, Muirfield, Scotland, the big weekender this weekend on the casuals. I hope to see you out there. Um, we're doing great. We got off to a little bit of a slow start with the membership, uh, with the new game. Um, but we, uh, we're turning on the jets here and we're cranking it up and the numbers are increasing. So we, we love to hear from you. Drop us a line, drop me a comment here, like and subscribe, the whole nine yards. Uh, hope to see you out there. Talk to you soon. Have a great one. Bye for now.